Hi, I'm Sky Faber. I'm a PhD student in computer science here at UC Irvine, studying security and privacy. About the issue between Apple and FBI that's been in the news recently, the main problem that we're having, that we're seeing at least uh, between these two big parties, is that the FBI has recovered a device, which is an old iPhone, iPhone 5C, uh, that has been pin, pin protected by one of the uh, attackers in the San Bernardino shooting case. Because of some recent improvements that Apple has put on their devices, uh, I think since iOS 8, uh, the device and everything on it is completely encrypted by this pin. And if you don't have the pin, you can't get any of the information, any of the data that's on the device. And the FBI kind of believes that there might be some incriminating information on there that will help them kind of solve this case. It is important to note that actually, it is possible to get into the device, but there is a risk of actually completely corrupting the device in the process. And to kind of understand this, uh, you really need to understand what security measures are in place on the device already. So what the FBI would like to do is be able to type in the correct pin. This is what they're really shooting for. Uh, but there is some problems. If you type in the pin incorrectly, you get a small delay. And every time that you type in the pin incorrectly, you get more and more delay until at some point, I think it's like 10 times if you type in the pin incorrectly, it just completely formats the device. The important thing is the file system is encrypted. So even if actually you could recover the file system or just extract the file system, the hard part is decrypting the file system. In order to decrypt the file system, you need the pin and you can do what's called a brute force attack where you just try many, many pins and wait until you decrypted the file system. And you can do this on a clone of the file system also. Uh, but the iPhone has a special security feature. There's this code processor, which contains a key that is embedded into the processor at the birth of that processor, at the birth in the factory where processors are born. It's given a key. Nobody knows that key, including Apple. Apple doesn't know this key, and also the manufacturers don't report this key. It's just randomly generated. And this key is tangled with the user's pin in order to encrypt the device. The processor allows querying. So you can ask the processor, is this the right pin? Is this the right pin? Is this right the pin? But part of the software of the processor is to add these delays with every pin attempt. Once it gets to a certain number of pins to just completely format the device. Uh, secure deletion of the file system is not that important because the FBI has the tools to actually clone the file system in its current state. The hard thing that you really need to do is you need to convince this um, processor, which is protecting this key, to allow you to brute force that key with several other pins. And it, you need it to be able to tell you whether the pin is correct or not. The delay is, in some sense is actually more important. What they're really asking Apple to do is build a custom software that runs on this coprocessor that doesn't have this restriction of a time delay between each attempt. And so the reason that they need this is because uh, only that processor actually knows the secret. So you have to convince this processor to somehow reveal to you what is the encryption key for the entire device, which it will do if you have the correct pin. So there's another way to actually get access to the key that's stored in this coprocessor, which is actually extract it from the device and open it. Uh, and this uses, like in order to do this though, you need like a micron precision laser or something. And you have uh, this very, very small silicon object and you need to kind of cut into it and stick in some probes and actually measure the values of memory that are storing this key unencrypted. And this process is not trivial. It's possible that if they attempted to do this, they could actually just completely fry the, the chip completely and lose the key com forever. Uh, and then no one, including Apple, could ever actually get this information back. You know, the problem ultimately uh, is you have this small chip that contains some information that only this chip knows. If that's the case, that only this chip knows this information and you would need to drill into it or like guess the password, how would it be possible for Apple to actually uh, help the FBI in any way. But they have some mechanism 
which only Apple has the uh, power to do because they have built it this way, uh, to update the firmware on this processor. So they could update the firmware on the processor to, for instance, just reveal the key. Uh, so what's interesting is that the FBI is not actually asking Apple to do this. They want to update the software so that it removes this time delay in between each pin entry in such a way that uh, when you're asking this coprocessor, is this pin correct? Is this pin correct? Is this pin correct? Uh, instead of waiting, you know, one second, 10 seconds, a minute, an hour, a day, it just will go as fast as it possibly can. And if they remove this restriction, uh, you might think, oh, okay, well, it's still secure because you know you have to brute force this pin and that's really hard. But it turns out that uh, if you have a six digit pin, uh, which is only of numbers, you know, they can actually break the phone in like a day. Uh, if it's a four digit pin, it's like 20 minutes or something just by asking this processor to go as fast as it possibly can. If they were to actually cut into the chip and extract the key, uh, then you can imagine that they could do that, you know, 10 or 100 or even a thousand times faster by just using supercomputer uh, architecture to just sit around and, and guess this thing. Really, at the end of the day, there is not a huge technical burden on Apple. They have the infrastructure in place so that they can make updates for specific devices. So they could actually make a version of the operating system for only a specific device and authorize it for only that device. This is really a legal question. And I think a lot of the reason that they're battling on this issue uh, isn't because of the technical security aspects, but because uh, they're trying to establish a legal precedent that the government can compel companies to build things for them that they don't want to build, that they can compel companies to add backdoors to their software.